mine dust lung diseases are actually a broad spectrum of diseases. Um, the most common one that people think about is pneumoconiosis, which is a scarring lung disease when people inhale dust, mineral dust, whether it's coal mine dust or silica or asbestos, sometimes the lungs uh, will scar in response to that dust. They can't eliminate it and these scars can be small and they can be very few or they can be very very many scars and they can be even quite large scars and that pneumoconiosis can therefore damage the lungs making it hard for people to breathe. And I think that's the one that people think about most often when they hear about uh, these mine dust lung diseases because it's seen on x-rays and uh, very striking. But mine dust exposure can also cause um, a variety of other diseases one of the most common is chronic um, obstructive airways disease. Um, and that um, really comprises chronic bronchitis and emphysema, two very common diseases that most people probably have heard quite a bit about because they're common in people that smoke cigarettes or have tobacco smoke. But they're actually caused by mineral dust exposure, both coal mine dust and silica and mixed dust. These dusts um, can irritate the airways and cause them to swell cause extra mucus production that makes people cough and these swollen airways can be obstructed making it hard for the person to breathe. These dust can also cause emphysema which is a, a disease that I liken to Swiss cheese lung. It's, the lung is um, in response to those dust tends to digest itself a bit leaving holes in the lungs and those holes where there used to be nice functioning air sacs that would take oxygen in and get rid of carbon dioxide are no longer there and those holes just don't function and the person can be very short of breath from that. So coal mine dust can cause that as well. And you might hear the term silicosis, which just means that the dust that the person is inhaling may be much richer in silica, which is a very toxic dust from rocks. And the coal dust itself is also toxic um, and um, may be a mixture of those types of dusts. I think that we need to um, approach mine dust lung disease um, on three levels and that those three levels have to be approached um, by everyone taking responsibility. The mining union and the miners themselves, the government and the regulators, and the industry. And the first level is to make sure that that primary prevention and dust control is solid because everything else is sort of a bit late. The second thing is making sure that we do have good screening and careful um, checks to make sure that miners, if they have early disease, are protected. Um, and then the third thing is, if people do get sick and they do have this disease, to make sure they get the best possible treatment, they get the best rehabilitation, and that they're compensated appropriately for the damage that, that happened to them as a result of their, their work exposures. I think uh, Queensland miners now are very aware of mine dust lung diseases in a way that perhaps a few years ago they weren't because of the publicity that's surrounded the re-identification of black lung in Queensland. So the most important thing, of course, is primary prevention, which means controlling the dust, making sure that the dust levels and the dust that you're exposed to is, is as low as possible. And so I think the miners have to work closely with their uh, employers and um, with the inspectorates to make sure that that's being done well. And then I think um, participating in the coal mine workers' health scheme, making sure that they're getting tested, that they're um, aware of their results and learning about their results. I think they need to know about their health, uh, one of the measurements that I try to tell miners to learn about is their spirometry measurement when they blow into that machine. Uh, one of the most important numbers is the FEV1. It stands for the forced expiratory volume in one second. How much air they blow out in one second. And just to know that their levels are good and that they're what their percent of normal is. Sort of like you might want to know what your blood pressure is or your cholesterol is. I think that's an important thing to, to be aware of and to keep track of. Um, and I think those are some, some steps. And if you are short of breath or have symptoms, um, don't just attribute it to getting older. A lot of us, as we age, we think, oh, these things are just because I'm getting older. But make sure you get checked out and make sure that um, you are carefully evaluated.